Hello and welcome to sellmycomicbooks.com. My name is Ashley Cotter Cairns and today I'm going to introduce a topic that I haven't talked about on YouTube before, but I think it's really important. I actually live in Montreal, Canada and there's a small subset of the hobby from the 1980s called Canadian Price Variants. Now, Canadian Price Variants until quite recently were not broken out by CGC on their labels which meant that collectors were either completely unaware of what they were and probably passed up many of them while they were going through dealer backstock, or if they did find them and were aware of them, they weren't able to go and certify those at CGC and the true value of those comic books was not really realized. So I'm gonna show you today Marvel and DC price variants and they're quite different and I'm gonna explain how to spot them and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the values and if you have any questions you can post comments below. So let's get going. First of all, we've got World's Finest Comics. This is a DC Canadian price variant. I'm going to put that close to the camera. Helpfully, for a while at least, DC Comics actually put the price in Canadian dollars on the on the front. You can see here that the price, which would normally be 60 cents on a US issue, is clearly marked 75 cents Canadian. So what that means is this is this is the easiest Canadian price variant style to identify and for some reason DC only did this on a very few issues. So there are Basically anything that was priced 75 cents, you'd typically find with that Canadian price variant box. But there are also other Canadian price variants with Canadian prices on the cover. Let's see if I can find another one for you. Here's something a little different. This is a very popular title, not. All-Star Squadron Annual Number 2, and you can clearly see on the front cover that that is also priced $1.25 Canadian. So as well as the standard 75 cent issues, you also have these larger special issues that had sometimes $1 or $1.25 Canadian written clearly on the cover. So when you come across one of these in a dealer stock, you'll know, or on eBay, you'll know that that's a Canadian price variant. Those are the easy ones. Now, you have something a little more challenging. So, for, for whatever reason, DC Comics stopped doing that when the price went up from 75 cents to 95 cents. I don't know why. I'd love to have a conversation with a, a DC Comics rep from the 80s if you could find one. Here's a sort of semi key issue this is Saga of the Swamp Thing 21. It's one of the early John Constantine appearances who went on to become Hellblazer. You can see that's clearly marked 95 cents. There's no mention of the currency. It doesn't say Canadian on it. However, if you look up a Swamp Thing Saga 21 US edition, you'll find that the price on the cover is 75 cents and it actually breaks out the British pricing and the Canadian pricing as well. You've probably seen boxes like this before. I'm going to put some pictures on this video so you, you know what I'm talking about. I'll do a comparison side by side. Why they stopped writing Canadian dollars on the front, I don't know. The whole reason there were Canadian price variants is because of the currency fluctuations between the US and Canada. So at times over the past 30 years or so, the difference in currency has been quite significant. If you're a publisher, that causes a problem. If you're trying to sell a comic book for 75 cents and you're distributing it in Canada, those people that's paying in Canadian dollars, they, they get a kind of a cut because you're, you're giving them a discount because the, the actual exchange rate means that the, the value of 75 cents Canadian is way less than the value of 75 cents US and when you add that up, that up over millions or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of copies sold it costs the publisher money to sell these so they created these just to kind of make up for currency fluctuations so that's the second type of Canadian price variant the one that is not clearly stated 
uh, in Canadian dollars, and there are more than one price point that this happened. So we have a crisis on infinite earths here, also 95 cents. Look it up on Google, you'll see that the original price in the US is 75 cents. Here's a all-star squadron. And this one's really interesting. This one is the final issue of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, I, I must confess, before I came on, on to do this video, I didn't look up the original price in the US. But look at that. I've never seen a comic book in that era that was priced at $1.60. And that's also a Canadian price variant. Now, uh, this collection I actually picked up in uh, the greater Montreal area, just across the border, actually, into Ontario. And one thing I would advise you when you're looking at Canadian collections or collections in, in border cities like Detroit, ones that face uh, the Canadian border, like across the river or something, you often find Canadian price variants have kind of crept into that band of cities just across the border. Minneapolis is another one. Uh, what you'll find is uh, Canadian price variants are a little bit like mice. If you find a mouse in your house, it means you've got more than one mouse. It's just, there's never one mouse, there's always more. And the same thing for Canadian price variants. If you find one in a collection, keep your eyes open because there's likely to be more. Same with the uh, Marvel price variants in the 70s. Sometimes you're going through a collection, you find a 35 or a 30 cent price variant. You really need to be on your game then because there's probably more than one. If that person lived in one of those test markets, they'll have more than one in their collection. Same for these price variants. If someone's got one, unless they happen to buy it from a Canadian dealer or something, they're likely to have lots. So you just want to keep a close eye. The other thing to bear in mind about Canadian price variants is they have one other feature. That is the barcode. They always have a UPC barcode at the bottom left cover Instead of sometimes you see on, uh, for example, Marvel Comics, they will have a Spider-Man's head in the bottom left corner, or sometimes they have something like a 50th anniversary of Marvel thing in the bottom left corner instead of a barcode. Canadian price variants always have a barcode. So I went through this collection. And there was one other weird price one. This is World's Finest 300. I don't know how much it was in the US, but it's $1.50 Canadian. I'm guessing it was probably something like $1.25 or something. A couple more interesting books here. The first issue of Supergirl, 75 cents Canadian. Uh, sorry, before I looked at this, I, I, I don't know why I thought this was interesting. It's definitely it's clearly not interesting at all. So that's DC. You have the ones that are clearly marked and the ones that you have to kind of know what the original price was. Uh, one more thing about that. I'm just going to show you another close up. In the US price box, oh, there's my finger, it's hard to do this in reverse. The US price box up here, you'll find that there are three prices, the US, the Canadian and the UK price in the same spot. Whereas in Canadian price variants, just one price. So that's the other thing. And if you're not sure, you've got a book and you think it might be a Canadian price variant, you can always go on Google, search for the issue number and look for an image. There's a Marvel and DC fandom Wikipedia pages and uh, wiki pages, and they have very good cover images of all those issues, and they often have the US price on the cover, so you'll be able to tell from looking and comparing to yours, oh, the US price was 75 cents, this is 95 cents, and it's got a barcode, it's definitely a Canadian price variant. Here, is a Marvel team up 141. This is one of the first appearances of the black symbiote costume, and it's a very popular issue. And you can see here it's priced at 75 cents. If you go on Google and do a search for this issue, or if you even have one in your collection, you'll see that the original UK, uh, US price was 60 cents, but there's no indication here of a currency. Much like the other later DC ones, there's no statement that this is a Canadian currency and again you'll look at the bottom left hand corner you can see the barcode clearly these always the DC the Marvel ones always have barcodes as well so if you're not sure like you're on the fence oh maybe this is a Canadian price variant but there's a spidey head in the bottom it's not a Canadian price variant this is a key issue and the value of Canadian price variants 
uh, on key issues is quite uh, interesting. Well, I'll get to that at the end. Let's look at some others. Again, same story. You have your 75 cent price up there with no currency marked, and you have your barcode. Spectacular Spider-Man. The final issue of Ghost Rider. Once again, you can see clearly up there, 75 cents, and down the bottom there's a barcode. Ah, yeah, sorry, it went sideways. I thought there's no barcode. I was I was telling your stories. No, there's a barcode there. It just happens to be sideways. That was weird. Captain America. Same deal, 75 cents barcode. The thing. 75 cents barcode. I think you're getting the message, but. Just like DC Comics, there are also some weirdly priced ones. Um, usually the ones from the limited edition series, limited series like Secret Wars or the, the one to four issue limited series that you saw in the 80s that Marvel did loads of. They did, uh, I think Iceman had one and you know, X-Men versus Avengers, all kinds of those weird little collectible series. Eternals Volume 2 was like a limited series. Here's Namor, Submariner. And you can see here the price on this one is a dollar. Again, there's a barcode. It's a dollar. Now, I didn't look this one up, but I'm guessing that 75 cents to one dollar seems like a big jump. But I can't think of a price point that Marvel might have used. I think it was 75 cents. I think it was an 80 cent cover price any, any time. I know there was a 60 cent cover price. 75 cent cover price. I, I, I'll need to look it up after I finish shooting this video, but you can see that odd prices don't necessarily mean it can't be a Canadian price variant. You just need to make sure that you have access to the internet so you can check out the original US price and make sure that you've got a Canadian price variant on your hands. Here is a, this is a semi key as well. This is Secret Wars number seven. It's the first appearance of Spider Woman. I can't remember much more about it than that. Something to do with Spider-Woman, which by the way, as a tip, is, is a, a very hot character. Spider-Woman is really attracting a lot of interest. I think it's Jessica or something. Anyway, you know what? I, I've forgotten who it is, what it is, but it's a key. And again, barcode, and that's a $1 price point. From the same series, the first issue, which is also a hot book right now for some reason. And again, you can see it's $1, and again, the barcode is there. And finally, this is also a semi-key. This, this is a book that's been attracting a lot of speculation. Power Pack number one. Now, Power Pack number one in the US was a dollar. I know that for sure, because it's a slightly larger issue than average. I didn't count the pages, but it feels thicker than a typical book of this era. And I actually have some more Power Pack from this run in the same collection with a 75 cent cover price, which is Canadian. This is $1.25 Canadian. You can see the barcode there. Now I didn't have any Marvel annuals uh, from this era, any oversized giant books from this era, unfortunately, to see what the cover prices are on those. But in time, I'm going to create a price guide for Canadian price variants and, and try and list all the different cover prices and all the different issues to look for. For some reason, it's a very common book, but for some reason, with all the speculation, it's now around I think it was about a hundred and something dollars in 98 now but if you found a Canadian price variant in 98 the price would be quite uh, radically higher and let me talk a little bit about that so the biggest issue I have in this little run is the first one I showed you Marvel team up 141 that black symbiote costume this book I mean this is not a particularly nice example in fact the collection I bought was was kind of beat up um, my, uh, Canadian price variants are not necessarily valuable. That's the first thing to bear in mind. You saw some some pretty average run books here, like All Star Squadron. Uh, nobody cares about All Star Squadron as a US book, and so most likely most people are not going to care that it's a Canadian price variant. You might get a dollar for one of those run books if you're lucky, and the Canadian price variant might be worth five bucks. It, it's not going to make you rich. However, if you're going through a dollar bin in a Canadian sh shop or one of those border 
cities and you come across a bunch of these, they're worth picking up. I mean, it's not going to cost you the earth. And I really think this is going to be a growth area of the hobby. The reason I mention this is because there are only so many things you can do as a collector. Like if you're if you're an investor, that's something else. Like if you have say I don't know hundred thousand dollars and you say instead of investing in stocks and bonds and things like that, I'm going to invest in comic books. Well, that's a totally different story. But if you're a collector who has an eye on value and is thinking like, okay, I'd like a challenge. Well, it would be a great challenge to put together a whole collection of Marvel and DC Canadian price variants for sure. And I think their value is just going to increase. The CGC labeling has finally caught up and they're starting to mention Canadian price variants on their labels, but it's still in its early days. And so the big key issues are the only ones that really have any sales to, to follow. So those run books, unless uh, something goes crazy and, and a bunch of them come to market, those are kind of scarce in, in the census. So those are the kind of thing that might get bids from people like you who are interested in Canadian price variants. So let's talk about this team up. I'm going to grade this spot grade at about 7.5. That is not a good grade for a mid 80s book, I can tell you that. It, it's it's a beta, effectively. If this were a Silver Age book and it was a 2.0, that gives you a sense of how it is on the average grade scale for this era. But still, it's not a total dog, it's a respectable copy and it's a Canadian price variant. So I looked up prices on this book online before I did this video. A typical 7075 sale of this book in a CGC holder will be a, a bit of a dud, it's like 40 bucks. A Canadian price variant of the same book in the same grade was about 110. So that's a significant price difference. And there are other books I can talk about because actually we've actually had some in CGC holders and sold them. One was um, Amazing Spider-Man 252. We bought a collection that had two copies. One was a 9.8 and one was a 9.6 when we graded them. And the 9.8 sold for about $1,500. Now a 9.8 of ASM 252 at the time was selling for about $300. That's a huge difference. And the big difference in value is because it's such a key issue. That means demand is high for that book anyway, and so the Canadian price variant makes it just as, as desirable, but there are less of them, so the price of Canadian price variants has a massive gap between the regular issue and the Canadian issue. I think that Canadian price variants are worth looking out for. I wouldn't get super excited. It's not like finding an action one in a stack of dollar books. It, it's going to make a significant difference to values, but until this era, is more collected and people really focus on putting together those runs of Canadian price variants. Those typical run books I showed you earlier aren't going to be worth a ton. But if you just tuck them away, I mean, that's what we've been doing at the office. We don't certify books that are like seven, seven, five. There's just no point. It's just like a waste of plastic and time and money for, for, for now anyway. But once this market gets more established, those run books will go up in value and they'll be worth listing individually on eBay as singles and they might sell for 10, 20 bucks each. And that adds up. If you've just been picking them out from dollar dollar books, uh, dollar boxes for a while, that will turn into a significant nest egg for you. So what we've done at the office, we have a little section of our warehouse where we just have Canadian price variants stacked up. And we just, whenever they come in like this, we put them aside, we put them in a box, we label it and we wait. And that's what I advise you to do. Try and pick them up cheap. If you do come across a key issue like Marvel Team Up 141 or Amazing Spider-Man 252, snap them up and maybe consider flipping them because those higher, high end books with the higher demand are going for crazy prices now. I think those will come down. So those expensive ones now won't be as expensive uh, over time, but I think the cheap, cheap ones now will become more expensive over time. So there'll be a, a closing of that gap. And that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little rant about Canadian price variants. I wish you well when you're going searching for these. They're actually kind of scarce. I'd say we buy, I don't know, about a collection every day or two that has a good run of 80s books. And out of those, I'd say once every month or two, we, we find a few Canadian price variants. It's pretty rare to find so many in one place. So um, if you do come across them, keep them. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Please subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and follow us on Facebook. All the links to, you need to, to our stuff are below. We're on eBay, we're on Shopify. We, we 
aim to please. Our job really is to just go out and find those books that you haven't got time to find, bring them to you as easily as possible. Thank you very much for watching. See you again. Bye for now.